Hey everyone, this is Daily Dose of Medicine. In this video, we will talk about shingles, also known as herpes zoster. We will go over clinical features, especially in prodromal acute phase and also post-herpetic neuralgia. Also, we'll talk about pathogenesis, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. Stay tuned till the end and let's get started. Herpes zoster or shingles is a viral infection caused by VZV, which is also responsible for chicken pox. After an initial episode of chicken pox, the virus remains dormant in sensory ganglia along the spinal cord and cranial nerves. Herpes zoster occurs due to reactivation of this latent virus, leading to a localized rash and associated neurological symptoms. Now, let's talk about clinical features. It typically presents with a painful unilateral rash that follows the distribution of a specific dermatome. The clinical course can be divided into three phases. We will talk each of them, like prodromal phase, the acute phase, and the post-herpetic neuralgia phase. Prodromal phase is characterized by non-specific symptoms such as pain, tingling, or burning in the affected dermatome. These symptoms often precede the appearance of the rash by a few days, making early recognition challenging. Understanding the prodromal phase is crucial for timely intervention and preventing the complications. In acute phase, we have unilateral vesicular rash which evolves into pustules and then crusts over time. The rash is usually accompanied by severe pain, which can be debilitating. Other symptoms we can see are fever, headache, and malaise. Post-herpetic neuralgia, which is probably the most common and important part, it's distressing complication of herpes zoster, especially in the elderly individuals. It's characterized by persistent pain in the affected area, which may persist long after the rash has resolved. It can significantly impair the quality of life, making effective pain management essential. Now let's talk about pathogenesis. We have reactivation of VZV, the subsequent neural spread and the immune response. First, we have VZV reactivation. It's thought to occur due to waning cellular immunity, typically associated with aging or immunosuppression. The virus travels along sensory nerve fibers, reaching the skin and causing the characteristic rash. Second, we have neural spread and dermatomal involvement in this phase. Uh, during reactivation, VZV spreads along sensory nerves, leading to the involvement of a specific dermatome. This distribution distinguishes herpes zoster from other dermatological conditions. Last, we have immune response. The immune response to VZV reactivation plays a crucial role in determining the severity and duration, innate and adaptive immune Mechanisms are involved in controlling viral replication and limiting tissue damage. But accurate diagnosis of herpes zoster relies on a combination of clinical evaluation, laboratory tests, and imaging studies. We will talk about diagnosis right now. A detailed patient history, including the presence of a previous chickenpox infection, is vital. Also, we will use laboratory tests, including serological assays, can help identify VZV-specific antibodies and confirm the diagnosis. However, these tests are not always necessary and are mainly reserved for atypical cases or immunocompromised individuals. Viral culture and PCR techniques can directly detect VZV in vesicle fluid or lesion scrapings, providing definitive evidence of infection. These tests are particularly useful when early antiviral therapy is warranted or when the diagnosis is uncertain. 
Imaging studies like MRI may be considered in certain cases, especially when there are concerns about complications involving the central nervous system or internal organs. Now let's talk about treatment. The management involves antiviral therapy to reduce the duration and severity because it's caused by virus of the acute phase to prevent complications such as post-herpetic neuralgia. Pain management and appropriate management of complications are also essential components of treatment plan because the pain we have in this infection is so severe. We have antiviral therapy. We can use medications like acyclovir, velocyclovir, and femcyclovir. These are mainstay of the treatment for herpes zoster. These medications inhibit viral replication, promote faster healing. Early initiation of this therapy is crucial for optimal outcomes. Pain management is a critical aspect of this treatment, particularly individuals experiencing severe or prolonged pain. Various pharmacological agents can be used, including analgesics, anticonvulsants, and tricyclic antidepressants can be used to alleviate pain and improve the quality of life. For managing the complications, we have complications like post-herpetic neuralgia, bacterial superinfection, and ocular involvement, eye involvement. So we have specific management strategies. We could use antiviral therapy, analgesics, corticosteroids, and appropriate referral to specialists are important. For prevention, we usually use vaccination and post-exposure prophylaxis for susceptible individuals. These measures aim to reduce the risk of developing the disease or its complications. Vaccination against herpes zoster is highly effective in preventing the disease and reducing the incidence of post-herpetic neuralgia. The herpes zoster vaccine, commonly known as shingles vaccine, is recommended for individuals aged 50 years and older. The immunoglobulin is a specialized immunoglobulin preparation that can provide passive immunity to individuals who are at high risk of severe disease or complications due to herpes zoster or varicella exposure. It's primarily used in specific populations such as immunocompromised eels. And we have post-exposure prophylaxis with antiviral medication. We may use this in patients, individuals who are at high risk of developing severe herpes zoster, such as those who are immunocompromised or pregnant or those who have not been previously vaccinated. Thanks for watching. That was the end of the video. Don't forget to watch our hairy leukoplakia and human bites are dangerous videos. See you on the next one.